And now, and now, the Kill or Be Killed podcast with Damien Ross, founder and master instructor of the Self Defense Company. Hey, this is Damien Ross with the Self Defense Company, and you are listening to the Kill or Be Killed podcast. And I'm here with my good friend and director of instructor development, George Hutchings. Hey, George, what's going on, man? I'm not too much. Just up here in Canada, a bit of a snowy day, but, you know, it is what it is, right? Right. So uh, before we get started, an uh, interesting thing happened last night. I was out with uh, one of my buddies who I'm also on the uh, local fire department with, and we were coming home, and it's uh, it's cold, right? So um, we blow by this guy. It's like 1230 at night, and I see... It's not common to see. We're kind of like really a, a little rural out here, and it's not uh, common to see people walking along the street. Um, and especially uh, the guy is wearing just jeans and a hooded sweatshirt. I mean, he looked like a freaking – he looked like a meth head, right? So, um, yeah, we turn around, and, uh, you know, I just uh, you know, I just ask him, you know, if we can help him. And uh, he's like – well, you know, can you give me a ride to the Exxon station? And of course, I'm like, no. <laughs> so, so, and, you know, he's like, all right. So then, obviously, we call our buddies on the police department. And it's funny, you know, because uh, uh, my buddy's not used to, you know, dealing with them. He's, you know, just used to dealing with them on the radio with the fire department. You know, it's the fire department. So he's, he's calling and he's trying to sound, like, very official. You know, he's like, you know, uh <laughs> Hello, yes, sir. This is the so finally we'll he goes through this whole thing, and um, we're sitting there. We're just following the guy like at about in my in my rig. We're like, you know, about fifty yards behind him as he's walk along the road. There's no one else on the road, and it's taken a little while for our guys to respond. So then I called up to him like, "Well, how are you guys?" <laughs> like, because I know the dispatcher. We're a small town. You know, he's like, "They're on their way." I'm telling you. So, um, yeah, they rolled and they passed and they picked them up. But there's just one thing to think about. I mean, here we are, nice community, guy just walking along. You know, he was clearly, clearly um, a junkie. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not like he can – we don't have, like, a bus stop or anything. I mean, he really has to try to get to where I live. Um there's a highway, there's, you know, uh, so, and, and considering the way he was dressed, who knows? And, you know, you never know, I, I, you know, where you live, you know, what's going on in these houses, right? Um, right. Uh, this guy could be, you know, trying to score, you, you know, who knows what the hell brought him there, what he's there. But the fact is, no matter where you live, um you know, there's always crap going on, and you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Absolutely. You know. So, anyway, uh, thanks for that. Um, thanks for that color follow-up. Feel free to talk, man. Are you there? No, I am here. I'm just. I'm listening to your story. You, you know, it's. We've had so many incidents like that around here too. I mean, you you never know. You see a person out in the middle of the street, middle of the night. You know, he's got fucking five, ten guys waiting in the in the bushes, you know? It's right. you don't know what's going on. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's important, you know, to you know, call the local PD. You're not bothering them, you're not bothering anybody. It's what they do. Uh they respond and I'm gonna tell you they make most of their arrests uh, from people from concerned citizens calling up and uh telling them what's going on. So um yeah. The topic for today is going to be training partners. Now, um, George, you've got an extensive martial arts experience, as do I, as well as combat sports, as do I. And the biggest misconception that people have about, you know, what we do in the self-defense training system is that you need a partner to train with. Wouldn't you agree? You know, I, I get that question almost on a daily basis, and it's you know, and it's always the same answer that's going out. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna talk about it right now, but I mean, the obvious answer is no. You don't need a training partner because at the end of the day, we're talking combatives. We're talking kill or be killed. We're not talking sport. You don't have a partner that's trying to help you out. 
In the real world, you have somebody who's trying to fucking kill you. We can't train that way. Right. Right. I mean, let's just talk about uh, sport for an example. I mean, martial arts and combat sports. So when we talk, when we we separate them um, with no martial arts to me would be like an Aikido, um, would be uh, Kung Fu, would be something that would be considered more of a traditional martial art. I mean, there's obvious, excuse me, there's obvious Correct. crossover, there's some crossover because there is some sport involved in some of these with sparring and things like that. And then your combat sports would be like your tie boxing, your boxing, your wrestling, your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, your, yeah. your, your grappling, all that, MMA, all that. So mm-hmm. First, uh, people understand, I mean, you know, they're. Uh, you can use, you can definitely use, you know, martial arts and combat sports to defend yourself, without a doubt. So, really, you know, but it's, you know, it's probably another topic for uh, another podcast, but, you know, it's, they're grossly inefficient because the sports, uh, sparring and things like that are designed for safety. Uh, they yep. are designed at a specific time. Um, you're going against someone about your same size, sex, and ability. Um, it's uh, a controlled environment. Uh, there are rules, there's conduct, and there's a way to, and you know exactly when it's going to happen. You say go. Um, that, that's right. And, and, and Damien, I mean, the, the biggest thing that you said there is obviously rules. You ask yourself that question with whatever you're training. I mean, if, if there's rules that are involved, it's not combatives it's going to fall somewhere in that martial arts combat sports section before we start to get into the the self-defense reality based self-defense systems and then of course combatives right 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 so you know and when we're you know when we're doing these things when you're tra- you know when you're training and you're sparring you're, there's an exchange there's subtlety there's positioning uh there's strategy um when it comes to doing what we do uh, there's only attack and go, and that's it. It's like, how do you train an eye gouge at 100% on a training partner? How do you train to hit as hard as you can with reckless abandon on a training partner? You can't. Right. You can't. So, you know, when someone's, you know, in fact, the most important thing you can do is, you know, train to hit as hard and as fast and as often as you can. Now you posted something in the forum this morning and I thought it was an excellent term called continuous attack. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, the whole idea with continuous attack is look, the person that you're dealing with, if it gets into a point where you now have to take some kind of preemptive action, whatever that preemptive attack sh- uh, action is, let's just say you've now had to strike this individual to drive them back to try to end this conflict as fast as you possibly can. You need to keep attacking. You need to keep striking until they can no longer come at you, until they can get up, until they can respond. You need to have the mindset of a level 10. Think of like like a volume, you know, it's called the violence volume. Turn it right up to 10. You can always back down to a five or six if you need to, but have that mentality of a 10 when you're going at it. And that's the idea of a continuous attack. Just keep going, keep striking, keep striking until that threat can no longer, you know, function. Perfect. Right. Like if you, if you were even to draw an analysis, it would be if you're looking at like let's just say an MMA fight, where we operate is where they stop the fight, right? So it's yep. right when you get your first attack in, and we say attack. I know we're talking about empty, you know, people think of empty hand attack, but we use weapons, we use uh, firearms, we use anything you can get your hands on. So it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Just an attack is an attack, whether you're firing a weapon, uh, whether you're hitting them in the head with a rock. So. You're going to use that uh, continuous attack. So right where you've got your opponent or your target off balance, and then you're continually attacking him until the fight stops. And you brought up something which was great, which you, you, we start off at 10. Absolutely. As soon as you decide to use force, this is, again, when we, you know, we go through this, you know, when it's module one, uh, like literally first day stuff. Um, when you... Um, when you decide to flip the switch, you you got to come in like a lion. And it's not like this uh, escalation of force because when you do that, 
they wind up, you know, you get literally one step behind your attacker. You're letting them dictate the terms of the assault. And you can't do that. Like, That's they, right. They dictate the terms of the assault when they approach you, right? You're not looking for, you're not looking for trouble. They pick the time. They pick the place. What we need to do, they have a plan. They control that plan. And it really comes down to, like we said, the, the, like we always say, the factors of self-defense, which is position and distance, right, where he is in relation to you. And then we're going to control momentum and balance. We're going to maintain our forward drive, our momentum, and then we're going to destroy his, gonna, you know, destroy his balance as well while we're maintaining ours. Um, one of the things I just want to mention is that, you know, when we talk about, well, what if he throws a punch? What if he does that? Uh, when you're executing the, the self-defense training system forward drive, along with that, let's just use the edge of hand, for example, where your elbow is up, your chin is down, you're constantly moving into him. You always want to be where he's standing. You're always taking ground. They can't mount a, a meaningful offensive, whether they have a weapon or not. They're not in, order to, in order to deliver power into anything that you're doing, you need to have your balance, you need to have your feet and your hips set, and you need to drive the technique. You can hit with a punch or even a stab where somebody's moving backwards and flailing. It's not going to do much damage. It's not going to do much damage. Right. You know, it, and, and it comes right down to, you know, impact and attitude when you're striking. And this is when, you know, we talk about the continuous striking. We want to bring that into our training. And, again, you cannot train at that level 10. You cannot have that full aggression when you're against a training partner. I mean, do you want to have pads that a, a partner's holding? Absolutely. But can you haul off and can jab them as hard as you can right in the face, you know, with that? that piston motion back and forth over and over, rattle his brain. I mean, how many times can you rattle a person's brain before they're not training with you anymore? Right. Of course. And you're going to be, you, know? you, know, you get the, you get the uh, we call the, uh, you know, the asshole uh, hat, you know, because you, yep. you know, you're not going to, you, you know, you don't want to, I mean, martial arts, you know, we talk about control a lot, you know, and you spend 90% of your time with a training partner worrying about how you're hitting them. And a fraction of the time, you're actually hitting a pad or a heavy bag or a training dummy. And we do just the opposite. Because in order to, to develop any real meaningful power in your technique, whether you're stabbing, whether you're striking, whether you're you know, uh, bludgeoning, you, know, you need to hit something as hard as you would hit it. That's the only way to get stronger and to get faster. Not to pull at the point of impact. Not to... Yeah. Uh, and it's got to be, and it's got to be a continuous thing because you're training habits. I mean, when you're, and that's all training is, is developing habits. So when you're in the injury and you're training to pull your punches, you're training to stop. Your training partners allowing you to win. Um, it, you know that you're going to have unrealistic expectations of what you're going to expect. You know, like I always said, I'm like, if I put you in a room, which I kind of want to do, what you kind of do, and I'm like, and you hit this thing one technique as hard as you can for two hours a day. And I go, I'm going to tell you in about a week, I go, if anyone comes near you, you're just going to haul off and blast them. And it's a hell of a lot better off than learning a whole bunch of different shit, pulling your punches and, you know, confusing yourself at the moment of truth. So that's right. You know, we need, you know, with the, you know, you need to, you know, people need to understand that, you know, I don't care what you do. I'm like, well, what if he grabs my wrist? I mean, hit him. What if he, yep. he grabs my shoulder? Hit him. I go, what's he doing that close to you anyway? Don't wait to be attacked, which is another problem that our training partners do. Is everyone you line up, you line up in class when you're learning, you're like, okay, we're going to defend, you know, they do the bullshit, you know, specific defense techniques. Okay, we're going to do wrist grab number one. And you stand there, and he's in, in your space, and you wait for him to grab you, and then he waits for you to attack him, and then he lets you win. You know, like those grabs, those pins, as, you, as we do in Module 4, are just the beginning of the assault. They're just the beginning. Right. You, know, you're, you know, it's what's happening next is the real attack. In fact, those initial grabs are generally inconsequential. You know, all we care about is where you are and how far you are, are from us. You're either, you're either within our range where we can touch you or you're on top of us before the you're grappling us or you're grabbing us. That's it. 
Well, and, and, and this is it. And, you know, I mean, we talk about the term self-defense and, and I bloody hate the term self-defense because you've got to remember what self-defense really is. Self-defense is a reactive. You're putting yourself in a reactive state somewhere along the line. You fucked up. It, maybe, you know, with, with the awareness, you missed something, whatever. Right. When you look at what combatives actually is, we're more, we're more of a preemptive system. We're going to, once we realize something's not right and we need to defuse the situation, we are going to defuse it before we are grabbed, before we are hit. I mean, hey, if we get into a fight, if they fight back, yeah, there's a fight that's happening. But, you know, we are going to do everything that we can to disrupt their thought, to make them react, to take that power away from them and give it to ourselves. Right. Exactly. I mean, there's two people in a fight. There's someone who's, there's what, the person who's attacking and the person being attacked. That's right. You know, there's, I think we, you know, again, for, and this is what we get from our, um, our sport training is that, you know, there's an exchange. He's going to counter your feeling. I mean, it kind of, it happens in a way, but it's more with like posturing and positioning with what we do. So it's like the, the formula is kind of there. But it's just it's manifest itself in a in a simple way. Whereas like if you walked into a ring um and you were ready to go and you started sizing up your opponent, I'm like, we're walking in the street and you know, someone is approaching us. So now instead of actually getting into a stance, we're taking a position of advantage and we're interviewing them, seeing what they want. Um That's right. And, you know, and then once we decide to go, we go. And it doesn't matter what they do. And it's hard for people to, you know, um, to comprehend that because they're, you know, they're not used to taking that first step first. Um, and that's the person who usually wins. That's that's right. And I mean, we're we're having this conversation about combatives and this whole mindset of attack continues attack. I mean, we're not talking about Uncle Bob at the at the family wedding who got a little drunk who just needs to be put in his place for being stupid. We're talking about that asshole out in the street who has no regard for you. I mean, I refer to them as just a bloody meat puppet. That's all they are. You need to dehumanize that individual because God knows they've dehumanized you. Absolutely, and it had a great point about dehumanization, which comes from training. You know, when you're training on your, that's why I, I like using the training dummies. It's a, it looks like a real person, but I don't give a shit about that person. That's all yeah. I want to see. Yeah, is that meat puppet? That, um, you know, that's what he used to call um, contractors, by the way, military. <laughs> so anyway, they, um, you know, you. You know, you just want to just attack that thing with bloody abandon. And, you know, and what happens when you're training and your partner and you accidentally hit them, you will stop and apologize. So somewhere in your psyche, you're imprinting this negative effect of actually hitting your target. And that is a huge problem. you got to go at this thing with bloodlust. And they're like, well, and you, as to your point before, you know, well, if it's Uncle, what if it's Uncle Bob at the wedding? Well, then I'm not going to fight him. I'm going to tell him, get the fuck off me, push him away, and go about my business. Exactly. You know, I mean, I'm not going to, you want to do some fancy, you know, wrist lock or hold. I go, you know what, if you want to take time learning those things for that situation, something like that, go right ahead. Go right ahead. But when it comes to self-defense and, you know, kill or be killed, uh, rape or not be raped, you know, this is what we're doing. This is what we need to do. I mean, you just need to just go. All you care about is where you are in relation to your target, and you're going to just drive, take ground, and attack. And attack in a manner that also provides you cover. You know, we're throwing that lead edge ahead, and we're hacking the shit out of it. You know, our elbow's up, our chin is down. All they're seeing is the top of our head and our elbow, right? We know That's right. So, but after that initial... They cover. They're not going to sit there and try, as you're going at them, they're not going to sit there and try to like maneuver around, you know, because you just got your, you know, if they move far away from you, then you keep running them down. You, you go faster and take more ground. You cannot stop. You know, and that's where, again, people get a little, you know, uh, people, you know, it's hard for them to conceptualize. But if you think about this, you're driving somebody backwards, you know, again, they're not going to be able to mount an offensive, as we, as we talked about before. Second, they're going to trip over shit. 
you know, you look around your office, you look around your home, you look around in the street. It's like you can't go 10 feet without running into something. Well, and, and, you know, and you talk about that, too, and, I mean, let's just talk about that from even a, an attacking standpoint and a preemptive standpoint. There is nothing better than utilizing your environment. So you're not, you're not in a dojo. You're not in that controlled, clean, clutter-free space. You're, I mean, you're, like you just said, you're tripping over shit. You're, you're banging into people. You're maneuvering around things. So, I mean, it becomes a huge detriment to that individual if you are constantly taking ground and forcing them off balance, forcing them backwards. They can't see where they're going. They can't see what's happening. You're in the driver's seat. You're grabbing shit in your environment to use against them. Right. Exactly. I mean, one of the things we, we do in the active shooter training is, is you know, you're, somebody's coming in your, you know, if you can't ambush them, you can't, or one of the things, you're just throwing crap at them to close the distance. I mean, just anything. Using anything. That's why, you know, and you know, even if uh, you know, I chuckle with uh, weapons defenses. Or what if, what if guys coming at me with a knife? Well, I'm not gonna fucking stand there. <laughs> you know, I'm like, holy shit, move, use a table, throw something at him, get him off his, get him off his game. And you got to systematically practice that. And that's right. You know, even if a guy, you know, people, you know, well, what if he's got a weapon? I mean, we assume that he's armed. We assume he has friends. All right. Uh, you don't know if he's armed. You don't you necessarily don't see the weapon. If he's holding the weapon, then I'm going to do something different. But if he attacks me, how do how do we know that punch is, or is not a stab in like in very low light conditions? You know, when your adrenaline's going and you know you're probably distracted because again you you've let this person into your space. So that's right. Unless it's your job, and then you got to deal with them. And hopefully, you're armed. So, but, but sometimes, and I mean, you, you, you know, you, and you talk about distraction. I mean, criminals are, are getting better and better at creating those fucking distractions out in the street to completely fucking throw you off. So you need to be constantly aware of what's going on at all times because they're going to use deceit. You know, that's, right. that's what they do. They're going to use that distraction. They're going to do everything that they can to, you know, distract you from noticing what the hell they're doing you know, to prevent you from, from having any kind of equalization abilities. Right. I mean, you're looking at, you know, they're, a lot of times they're going to use the dodge I mean, to get closer, right? So they're going to appear to be um, uh, in need of help, okay? They're going to yeah. put you in a position of uh, power. They're going to appear to be weak. Remember, nobody can, you know, in order to, for them to impose their will on you, they've got to get close to you. They've got to get next to you. So, you know, right there, you know, you're not, and what do you do in self-defense class? What do you do with a training partner? Okay, grab my wrist. Okay, bear hug me. Okay. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. We have contingencies for these things, um, and we, we, do have, we do train these, of course. But, again, they're coming at a cost of you not being aware um, and you can still do it because, again, all it depends is where you are, you know, in relation to your target. Um, so if, right. close to you, if they're behind you, you know, you're going to get your balance. You're going to you're going to attack and then attack and attack and attack. So, you know, they, um, you know, you need to uh, continue. You know, what once you once you start, you need to continue what you're doing. And getting back to my point, because I just remember what the hell I was thinking about, because I lost my train of thought for a second, <laughs> is that, you know, these people are, you know, they're approaching you, um, you know, they're, you know, they're coming into your world, into your space. Um, and again, you know, when you, when you have a partner and when you're training, you know, you're automatically letting them into your space and you're saying it's okay. You know, That's right. That most of what you're doing, most of what you train with a partner in self-defense is based on them already being too close to you and having their hands on. You. Yeah. You know, in reality, well, and, and, it starts. With yeah. And, and that's the thing. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time in module one with that, you know, uh, almost like a conversational distance, right? That little, little bit under two feet, 18 inches to two feet. And that's where you want to keep shit. There's, there's two distances that we'll really, really, really talk about, right? There's that conversational distance, and then there's that in-your-fucking-face distance. And you don't want them in your face. You want to keep them back, right? Because you're, you're very limited. And the problem with, quote, unquote, a lot of self-defense training out there is 
they automatically put people right into your fucking face. So you've lost a lot. You've lost a lot of right. ways to escape, to avoid, to de-escalate that. They put you into a situation where shit's already hit the fan. Right. You know, as I, uh, what we like to talk about, where the hell did this person come from? You know, people just don't jump out and decide, I'm going to attack you. All right? Yep. There's a size up, right? They're looking and they're doing the risk-reward. Does this person have something I want? Is it worth it? Can I get away with it without getting caught, injured, or identified? So, you know, when they, you know, when these people, when you practice something, you're ignoring, you know, life. You're ignoring life because life doesn't happen like this. These people don't magically appear in front of you and attack you. You know, it is, and this, and we spend most of our time away from that in life, managing our space, looking at distance understanding that as soon as somebody crosses our, our specific threshold, that we need to act and act now, you know, and that's, that's right. where, you know, everything is, you know, everything gets, gets confused and people are given or just inherently trained crappy habits. You know, in reality, you know, you just got to see, there's my problem. Okay. I'm just going to go with this person as hard and as fast as I can, whether they put their hands up, whether they try to swing, whether it doesn't matter. Because once I go, I go. And, you know, unless you have to take this person down, all right, and, you know, most times, most times that's going to even just the initial fight back is going to stop the attack and allow most people just to escape. Yep. Instead, of, instead of, you know, having to continue to go forward and, you know, finish them, which you can do. It's going to be your option. But, you know, if, if, if it's a crime, you know, if it's, a, if it's a someone who's looking to rob you, uh, if it's someone who's looking to, um, uh, if it's like a date rape situation, I mean, a lot of times just after your initial fight back, because they're picking you in those situations and bullies and, you know, attackers are picking you based on, you know, the thing, you know, based on one, one simple thought. Uh, I can get yep. what I want from this person. That's it. That's it. And they're not going to fight back. Because if they thought you would fight back, you know, they'd either approach you a different way or they just most likely just wouldn't even bother you. Won't that's even, right. Won't even bother you. You know, and that's... And, you know, and, I, and, and I think that's where people have the real breakdown when they're sourcing out their training. They're, they're looking for, you know, these sexy systems with these intricate movements and everything choreographed. I call it dancing. It looks beautiful, wonderful. You know, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is we're talking about somebody wants to fucking either take something from you and cause you seriously, like serious bodily harm or even fucking death. They have bad intentions. And, you know, it's a fight. That person has a knife. Be fucking prepared to be cut. Be prepared to be stabbed. Anybody who says to you, hey, you're not going to get fucking cut, you're not going to get stabbed, they're lying to you. Run away from that fucking trainer because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Right. As you know, what we want to do is we want to try and minimize the amount of damage that's done to us, deal with that fucking threat, get out of there, and then we'll go get medical help after <laughs> to deal with whatever's happened. We want to get home to our family, and that's what fucking combatives is. That's what we're training for. We're training for survival. We're not training for sports ceremony or any of that. Exactly. I mean, the hardest person, the thing for regular people to do, uh, or anybody for that matter, is to go to that next step, to take that next step. And in order to do that, you need to train in a manner that gets your aggression up and gets you into that mindset of, I just want to destroy this thing in front of me. And you can't do that with a training partner. You can't. Right. You know, and you can't, and you're not, and you shouldn't be doing that in combat sport and martial arts training for the most part. You're not trying, even though you, you may, you know, you've got this attitude to do this and to do it, but, you know, to a man, I've been involved in contact sports for, and, you know, for a long, long time. And, you know, when somebody seriously gets hurt or injured, you know, it's upsetting. You know, you don't yep. want go into the ring and seriously maim or kill your opponent. Uh, you don't want to do that on a football field. You don't want to do that anywhere. You just want, you know, you want to, you know, you'll, you will say terms like, hey, I'm going to fuck them up. I lit them up. I, you know, this had to knock them the fuck out, whatever. I mean, yeah, we say these things. It's fun. It's in the context of sport, but you're never really trying to kill another person 
and you know because you're unless you're psychotic and then that's a whole other thing then you, yep. you don't then you really don't need anything <laughs> so, I mean, that's, yeah. that's right that's right so you know for regular people you know to get to that dark place to flip the switch you know you've got to go a hundred percent i mean it's like lifting weights right if i if every day i came in i did the bar and i and i didn't move anything you know, I'm really not going to get stronger or better, you know, but when you, and you do, you're just lifting the bar when you're training and pulling your punches with your training partner. You're not training yep. anything real, you know, pre- you're pretending. And even though you have a real person in front of you, what you're doing is pretend and you need to, you need to put on some weight, you need to really kind of get after it. And, and next day, you hit it a little harder. Next day, you hit it a little harder and a little harder and a little harder. And one of the things that happens is your body starts to make adjustments that you can't like, make when you're pulling your punches. You know, you're turning your hip more. You're moving your feet. Your driving is like, how the hell? Your body is smart. It tells you yep. how to get the job done. You want to do something, it's going to find out the most efficient way to do it. And you got to do that training in the way it, that, you know, that the technique is intended and it's intended to destroy whatever it touches. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in coming right back to the, the reason for this call and the discussion of training partners, I think that are there benefits to having a partner? There certainly are benefits from the standpoint of them pad holding properly for you. I mean, obviously you're not, fucking lighten them up, smack them right in the head, but you're going to have them at least giving that, that moving, you know, moving backwards, that kind of thing. Because I mean, you hit a, you hit a Bob, the bloody thing, you hit it, it bounces back. It's not realistic from that standpoint, but you, above all, you need something that you can hit a hundred percent, which is why we prefer the Bobs. We prefer the heavy bags. We want partners who are holding the pads and then we'll go down to, you know, maybe the utilization of quote unquote, a little bit of sparring to get that feeling of an opponent moving around. It's good to have that, but it's not necessary when you're training in combatives. Absolutely. You know, I, I think, you know, if you did for essential self-defense, no, it's not. And, you know, if you wanted to do something for like, to feel like bear hugs and some of the ground fighting stuff and just some of the grads, I mean, you can do it a couple times to get, just the feel, but for the most yeah. part, you're doing the techniques away. So I would say if, like, if I had access to a training partner, I would spend training with a partner 5% of the time. I know that yeah. I, we did it for decades in my dojos. I was like, okay, so pad training, dummy training, pad training, dummy training, okay, you know, just practice with your partner. And what sucked, though, is that people that are training like that, it's very hard to pull your punches, which is good. You know, so you're kind of yeah. it up for incidental contact, but, it, you know, I didn't, you know, spending too much time with a training partner developed really shitty habits. And, you know, we all we pretty much eliminated it from all the training. <clears throat> and this is the only system in which you can train like this. Uh, you know, it's not a martial art. It's not a sport. For those things, you definitely need training partners. You definitely need, you know, for grappling and sparring and boxing and kickboxing and all that stuff. You need training partners. You do. Yeah. spar. That's how that works. You know, there's an exchange. There's a feel. Like what we're doing is just pedal to the metal, drag racing, go. And I don't give a shit what you do. I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to continue to do it. And that's what you know. All this comes down to. So I think um, I think we covered it all. Uh, if you want, you guys can leave your comments underneath, and we'll respond to them. Uh, George, uh, thanks for taking the time again, as always my pleasure. Absolutely. I, I love, I love these calls, man. I love debating this stuff. It's, it's, it's amazing the stuff that we hear and, and hopefully more people are going to reach out. Instructors will reach out. Students will reach out with different questions and we can do more of these podcasts answering people's concerns. You know, that's, that's what we're here for. All right, this is Damien Ross with George Hutchings, and you were listening to the Killer Be Killed podcast. Until next time, train honestly.